Hey guys, Brian from WorkshopAddict.com. Today we're going to check out Milwaukee's new M12 straight die grinder. We're also going to compare it to some other models, show you the power and the battery runtime. Sit back and enjoy. Before you use your die grinder, make sure that this collet is seated into this nut. When I got my die grinder, everything was kind of just screwed in here like this in it looked fairly normal right take it out if you have two pieces it is incorrect this needs to slide and snap in this is milwaukee's m12 fuel quarter inch straight die grinder model number 2486-22 the dash 22 of course means it comes in a kit it has two cp 2.0 M12 batteries. Now, with that, you also get this small case and a charger. We'll move that aside. This die grinder is very similar to the angle die grinder that Milwaukee came out with a couple months ago, obviously, other than it's straight. Sizing is similar. I'd say the handle is very similar. Trigger is very similar. And as we went over in that review, the safety and the trigger to turn it on is very similar to a pneumatic and it actually ramps up similar to a pneumatic. Let's take a listen. And there's nothing in the end here, but power is not instant. As you pull the trigger, it gives you that slow ramp up feeling. Uh, Milwaukee rates this at an equivalent of 0.3 horsepower, so you can compare that to any other specs that you might have out there on other models. This is a 21,000 RPM machine, which is actually slower than the right angle, which is 24,500 at its max. There's three speeds on this, zero to 10,000 RPMs, zero to 15,000, and zero to 21,000. If we were to look at the right angle die grinder, there is four speeds. Battery life is always gonna be shown once you pull the trigger, and it will be shown in a place that you can see it if you are right-handed. If you're using it left-handed, you will be covering that up. Same quarter-inch collet that you have here. Uh, two wrenches are included. There is no spindle lock, but you do have an LED light that comes on up front. We're gonna be using this with a multitude of different things, but if you have a die grinder and are not using the 3M roll lock system, you are missing out. We will put a link to that in the description so you can check that out. Uh, definitely cool, they have a lot of different abrasive materials that you can purchase. They simply screw on and off, very simple to use, very nice, easy to get just about anywhere. Let's take a look at the battery life and power of this guy. To test runtime, I'm using a very, very old intake that's been sitting outside. It will never be used. This is not how you're going to take care of an intake. I understand that. I'm just testing. I'm using a two inch Scotch-Brite pad that is very, very rough. So I'm just trying to clean the rust off of this, get an idea how it's gonna work and how long it's gonna work. In the beginning, I'm having zero issue with power. Everything's going good. It's a little uncomfortable to use this tool in the way I am because I'm straight up and down. The right angle die grinder at this point would be the tool I would normally pull out for something like this, but this is a great test. Put up my phone next to me to get an idea and after about four minutes, 30 seconds, I checked and I was around half battery. That allowed me to get completely around, take all the rust off, in at least the areas where the gasket would normally be. And I thought, well, that's fair. It's gonna allow someone to at least do a larger job in an engine or in wherever you might be using this die grinder with, with a larger disc. You know, two inch disc for this is probably close to its max and it is a small 12 volt tool. From there, I pulled out the bristle brush, which I love these bristle brushes for so many reasons, but most of the time I'll use them to just remove gaskets. And in this case, I was just trying to remove some rust, just basics. And when I would apply a little bit of pressure and keep the tool running in the same place, the tool would cut out. And it would cut out after about five seconds-ish. I could just turn it right back on, get back in the same place, or a different place even, five second-ish, 
it will turn off. So that was a little bit of disappointment to me. At that point in time, I seen that I was down to one bar. That was about six minutes, 30 some seconds. That's not a long time, but we are talking about a 2.0 amp hour battery and you can go up to a 6.0 amp hour battery in this without issue. It's just gonna make the tool a little bit larger. So if that's runtime is a concern, think about going up to the CP 3.0 or even the 6.0 amp hour battery that's available. So at this point, I'm going to pull this battery out, recharge it, put in our other one that is fully charged and then let's test it out as far as power would go against one of the larger DeWalt's just to get an idea of what's gonna happen here. To test power, I just wanted to use a burring tool on some fairly thick tubing. All I wanted to do is just kind of wallow out a little section of it and try to get a judgment feel of it. Pretty basic. Something we do all the time is maybe elongate a hole or something to that matter for welding or for any other purpose. And this tool did great. You could tell that it was up to the task of doing everything that was there and it really wasn't sucking the battery life out of the tool, especially like some of the larger two inch tools that we've been using. What I will say with it is you can tell that it's an, a, an M12 tool and I'm not saying that in a bad way. Uh, used to the 20 volt and the 18 volts, you can tell you're taking a step down and you should, right? So when we got done with that task, we switched over to a flap sanding disc, which is at this point down to about an inch and three quarter, put it on the tool and we could see at that point that this is too large for the tool. It did the same thing as the other M-Lock stuff did. It would cut out and it wasn't overly happy. Although we weren't applying a lot of pressure, this just isn't where this tool is at. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I just think that you need to know your limitations on what you're buying and if this tool is gonna fit for what you're doing, uh, that's it. If you're gonna consistently use these two inch accessories, you need to bump up a little bit. But just to test here, I wanted to throw the six amp hour M12 battery on the tool and see if it did any better with the larger two inch accessories. And to my surprise, it didn't. I am assuming at this point, this six amp hour battery is only gonna give you a little bit more or a lot more runtime. I really didn't feel any power and we had the same cutouts. So to compare this, just to get a feel for it, I had the DeWalt 20 volt. It's got a four amp hour battery on it. This is apples to oranges, but Either way, there is a huge difference. Uh, I was even using the burring tool on the 10,000 RPM max, and it was very comparable to the M12 on full speed. And then I switched over to the two inch flap sanding disc, and there was night and day difference. Although I will say to Milwaukee's credit, the DeWalt did cut out twice. I was putting a lot more pressure on the tool and you can tell by how nice and silver the metal is and it got through all that rust and then some got right into the metal and cleaned it up. So there is no doubt that the 18 and 20 volt die grinders are gonna be more powerful and that should surprise absolutely no one. So after using and testing this out, the reality is, is this tool is going to be well worth it if you're going to use it with smaller items, even burring tools or anything like even this thread redefiner. Now this is a, an eighth inch size thread redefiner, which is smaller. They make them in the larger quarter inch collets, but for some of your smaller bolts, you just get this little eighth inch reducer, pop it in here and tighten it down. And this size tool with the light really can make work easy. And I, I hate to come down to a Dremel to a point, but it is a much larger, much more powerful Dremel. 
but it gives you a lot of options. And when used correctly with those types of things, this stuff works absolutely perfectly. If you're gonna use larger things like this two inch roll lock bristle brush, you're going to see some cutouts and you're gonna have shorter runtime. But the size difference that you might see compared to a corded model is significant. And the size difference that you might see compared to another 18 or 20 volt battery operated one is significant. So we don't expect our 12 volt drills to go out and outperform some of our 20 volt or higher end drills. So why should we expect this model, which is a nice 12 volt tool to go out and outperform some of our corded or higher voltage tools? It's not, and it shouldn't again, but it does have some great uses for the right person. So runtime that we had using too large of a disc was six minutes, 30 seconds ish. If you were to bring that down to something smaller, you would see a much larger runtime with the two amp hour battery. You can solve that with a six amp hour battery if you need longer runtime and still a smaller tool. If you want to get out and run a little bit bigger stuff, you know, this right angle did hold up to this bristle brush a lot better. I don't know why, but it, it did. So if you were looking for something that was going to maybe be a little more along the lines of larger stuff, this really isn't meant for it either, but it did do better for short periods of time. It's not competing with pneumatic at this point. It, it is competing with my very small low end pneumatic. If you have a good pneumatic die grinder, it's getting there. And I think that not having the hose is what makes it step up, right? You're still gonna have the power, you're just not gonna have that long run time. If you need the long run time, you're gonna have to find a different solution, be it larger battery and or hose or cord. However it goes here, I like this. So for the right tool, for the right job, this, this knocks it out of the park. It does everything I need it to do. It has speed control, which I think is almost a necessity these days. Look at the accessory you're putting in here to make sure that you're not turning it too fast. I have a lot of these wire brushes that will fit in here, 4,500 RPM max. Do not run them, they're not safe. Look at that. Make sure that you're running the right stuff inside here, most of these burring tools are easily rated to 25,000 RPMs. In fact, this one is rated upwards of 35,000 RPMs. Make sure that you note it. If you have one of these sitting around and you can't read it on them, make sure that you keep them separate if you have tools that they don't fit in. Lots of things to look at with this. Hope I answered a lot of your questions. If you like the tool, don't like the tool, if it's for you, not for you, leave that below. I always like to communicate with you guys. I appreciate everything that you guys do to support us. Give us a like in this video if you can. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, have a great day.